Fierce is the Coastal Bend's most comprehensive high school football show. Friday Night Fever, proudly brought to you by CCRV, keeping RVs affordable and fun. Hi, good evening, everybody. We are live at Cabinets Field, the game of the week, Veterans Memorial, taking on the Ray Texans, two teams dealing with a lot of key injuries. There would be more tonight. Let me show you. Let's roll the highlights and get you to exactly what happened tonight. Here come the Eagles. Remember, they had a bye a week ago, one and one in district play, and the Texans across the way coming in at one and two, definitely a must win for Ray tonight. And because of injuries to both teams starting quarterbacks, here we go. This is veterans quarterback Joseph Gonzalez appears to injure his right shoulder right before the end of the first quarter. Gonzalez was trying to set the screen and literally insult to injury. He was also flagged for intentional grounding on that play. I know coach didn't like that. Okay, he was done for the evening. About a minute and a half later, tragedy strikes right here. This is bad news here for them. That's Ryan Villalone injures his left ankle on this tackle. He was done for the evening. Villalone was begging the medical staff to let him back in the game, but they wisely shut him down. So the Texans down to their third quarterback. All right, we didn't see a lot of offense until right before the half. The Eagles number three quarterback, Jacob Hernandez, throws it to Matthew Crawl. That's a 25-yard pickup. Great job of coming back for the football by Crawl, and a good thing because the Eagles at this point weren't getting much done on the ground. We saw a lot of Cody Piper in the Wildcat 20 seconds before halftime. Here he is, slams in. They missed the PAT, but they led 6-0 at halftime. Loving the pink socks, but keep in mind, at this point, this high-powered Eagle offense had scored six points in their last six quarters. Third quarter, Ray attempts to punt. Bad snap high over the punter's head. It's a safety 8-0 Eagles. They've been bottled up the entire third quarter. Finally, sail it over the head of the punter, Jace Spin, and Coach Cody Simper knows his team is going to get the ball right back. And, boy, they, they connect here. It's uh, Hernandez again, a new star born tonight. On the keeper, this is about a 25-yarder. This made it 14-0. This is the stuff legends are made of. How new is he? He's so new, he doesn't even have a helmet logo yet. We'll all fix right. that. Yeah, he had a long TD pass later, uh, and it's all veterans tonight. They wind up winning 29 to nothing. So, Jacob, you wake up today, did you think you'd see any playing time tonight? No, um, yes, sir, I thought I would. Um, it was a really tough game, and we played well, yeah. Cody, <laughs> you got a lot of playing time, too, as a Wildcatter. Yes, um, I was really, I was very tired throughout the whole game. But you know, uh, we had some setbacks in the in the first half, but we came out in the second half and we played very well. And I think overall, we had a great, great game. Coach Cody Semper, winning coach Cody Semper, one you'll never forget, I'm sure. What were you thinking when you realize you're down to quarterback number three? Uh, well, all of our guys prepare to be the starter. I mean, that's why they get those opportunities and. Uh, I, I don't know what to say. I'm mean, just incredibly grateful for this group of young men, the way they came together tonight to get this done. Uh, they overcame a lot, but every adversity comes with opportunity, and Jacob got his opportunity, and I did well for it. Our defense played lights out. I'm just extremely proud of all of our guys. All right, guys, you get our mattress firm, Friday Night Fever, championship trophy. Congratulations, guys. Way to go. <laughs> nice job, Eagles. All right, a big win tonight for... Veterans Memorial, how about George West? Could they stay undefeated? Let's head to Roland Rodriguez and George West for an update. Roland. Hey, thanks, Alan. Thanks, Paul. We had a good one here in the storytelling capital of Texas. 4-0 George West hosting 2-2 two two around his pass. Both teams looking for their second straight district win. We picked things up in the first quarter, no score. George West, who have outscored their opponents, 178 to 42 strikes first. Rory Campbell takes the pitch, and he will cruise in for the easy 30-yard touchdown. Longhorns up seven zip. Still first quarter action, backup quarterback, Devin Jackson, who had 145 yards rushing last week, breaks a couple of tackles, and he walks in for the 33-yard touchdown. It's a 14-0 ball game. Hold on. Aranda's pass not giving up. Quarterback Weston Pope caps off an 80-yard drive with a five-yard touchdown. It's a 14-7 game here in the second quarter. Then, within two minutes, George West was scoring not once, but how about twice? Devin Jackson shows off the arm. John Zuniga shows off the hands. They take a quick or an easy, however you want to say it, 28 to 10 halftime lead. 
And George West improves to 5-0 and 2-0 in District 16-3A with an easy 34-10 victory over Aranda's Pass. George West will travel next week to face San Diego. Aranda's Pass will be hosting Lineford next Friday night. Now joining us tonight is the man himself, Coach Brent Cornegie of the winning George West Longhorns. How you doing, buddy? I'm doing great. Thank yeah. you. I really appreciate you hanging out with us. Your team has outscored your opponents 272 to 52, and you're doing it with a backup quarterback. What does that say about your team? Well, I think the resiliency of our team is, is shown all year long. We've we've been hit hard by a lot of injuries, and, and kids have stepped up and and uh, filled the roles. Our, our motto has kind of been next man up, and, and then we've gotten some of those kids back. And um, again, it goes back to expectations, what we expect from our kids. And, last, and let's, before we go, let's talk about next week. We know this district's tough. Eight teams in this district, and you got a team, you're going to take on a very tough San Diego team who actually beat Bishop by 30 points. What do you have to do to win? Well, we have to continue to be to get better every week. Um, it's the same thing we tell the kids every week. Uh, you know, everybody starts out 0-0, and then every week you try to move up. And, and uh, you know, San Diego's going to have a quality ball club just like Aransas Pass did. And, so we've got to continue to get better. All right, year. Coach. Really appreciate it. Congratulations once Thank again. You. Hey, Allen, great game out here. George West looking really good. Let's hope they keep up the momentum heading into the few weeks as we head into, of course, the end of district play. Guys? All right, Roland. Thank you very much. Lots of great football tonight. Vets wins here 29-0. When we come back, we'll check in with Jeff Dubroff for more highlights for you after this quick timeout. Mic check, one, two, three. Hey, so I'm like... <laughs> Friday Night Fever is brought to you by CCRV, Thomas Van Clinic, Mattress Firm, and Good and Crisp Chicken. Welcome back to Cabotas Field, where Veterans Memorial has defeated Ray 29 0. Wow, what a ball game, huh? Think what that young man did, talking about that third team quarterback, yeah. Jacob Hernandez. Long pass to set up a touchdown, long touchdown pass, ran for two touchdowns. And we'll Amazing. Have, and we'll have your analysis coming up later in the, in, in the show. Let's check in now with Jeff. He's got highlights of a lot of games. Jeff, tell us what's happening. Yeah, Alan, you're absolutely right. A full slate of games, no chit chat to get to. Let's dive right in. Carroll taking on Miller. Miller, think about this. They are averaging 59 points a game. It is unbelievable. One of the best offenses. In all of the state, Andrew Body, the junior, finds Cassius Clay. He's one of his favorite targets. And here's another. He has so many receivers he can throw to. Ralph Rodriguez on the slant route uses his speed to cut through the secondary. And watch this, though. Carroll going to make some noise. Andre Sanders on the screen. 80 yards to the big box. 
There he goes. It would be 14 to seven, just like that. But this Miller offense just comes right back. Body's gonna use his legs to find the end zone. It was 48 to seven at the end of one quarter, 65 to seven at the end of the first half. Miller goes on to win 72 to seven is your final. How about the King Mustangs on the road taking on Victoria East. Josiah King, he finds a hole and he's gone. He is so good, so dangerous in the open field. King scores, takes an early lead, but Victoria East has Alan Jimenez. He is really good, really strong. He shows both there, finding the end zone. And then a free play as the Mustangs jump offside. Latavian Johnson, a dime to Damian Robles. Right now it's the fourth quarter, 50 to 20 is your score from Victoria. Moving on, Alice undefeated the Mustache crew. Will the Mustaches survive on the road against Port Lavaca Calhoun? Connor Kessler, he is great. Find Sean Flores, he's gonna do the rest. Look at him go. Calhoun has that offense that is just so tricky to figure out. And Alice threatening, fumble, can't get it. Sand Crabs are going to run away with this one. Final score from Port Lavaca, 55 to 7. How about Cal Allen still trying to prove they're the cream of the crop in District 15, 5A Division 2, taking on Somerset up the middle. There he goes. Charlie Hill inside the 10 yard line. And then Jarrett Garza is just going to take it in. Cal Allen continues to roll and they look good. 49 to 14 is your final. Let's wrap my part up here. Beeville taking on Central Catholic in San Antonio. Beeville's undefeated and they are looking good in the Chris Souza era. Look at this, off they go. Ben to the 40 yard line. Now Camacho goes down and then they're gonna score another easy touchdown at the goal line. But how about the passing game? This is Seth Gomez. Beautiful throw right on the money. Gabriel Caranco gonna take it in. Final score from San Antonio, 50 to 34. But the game of the night, maybe the performance of the night, comes from your game, Nikila. Yeah. Toloso Midway hosting San Antonio Southside. Maybe the best team in the district. And Toloso Midway looking for a marquee win. How'd that go? Yeah, absolutely. It was a huge night for the Warriors, Jeff, as you just talked about. They were sitting at 0-1 on the season in the, the district. And it will try to get the victory against the undefeated Southside Cardinals. So could TM pull off the upset to Warrior Stadium we go. And you can see here the Warriors taking the field first, but Southside, quarter, Southside would get the ball first. And you see here they get TM to jump offside. Southside takes advantage. The quarterback Escamilla finding his receiver, Chris Catamillo, 19 yards for the score. Just like that, the Cardinals lead 7-0. Then on to TM's first possession, probably the play of the game. Take a look. Warriors quarterback J.D. Garcia tosses it out to Noah Barrientes. He's dodging the Southside defenders, and it looks like they get him down for a short game. But wait, there's no whistle from the ref. So he keeps on going, and so does our photographer, Dennis Kingsbury. Thankfully, takes it in for the score. What a wild play. Let's show you that again. You be the judge. Was he down or not? I don't know. Interesting call. Either way, the celebration is on, and the game tied 7-7 about midway through the first. Then in the second quarter, after a missed field goal attempt by TM, Southside takes over. But a high snap gets away from Escamilla. He chases it through the back of the end zone, and that's the safety, folks. Warriors up 9-7 to at this point. Let's fast forward to late in the quarter after this nice interception by Sebastian Pais. TM on offense with 25 seconds left till halftime, and take a look. Garcia airs it out, finds Barrientes again. 54, 54 yards for the score. You see his teammate there, Alvarado, waving because he's gone. TM takes a 16-7 lead into the break, and the Warriors hold off a late comeback from the Southside Cardinals. TM gets the win, 21-24. All right, let's head out to London. The Pirates hosting Monte Alto, and the Pirates early on in the fight, in the first, Galvin, Gavin Pacha punching it in, making it six to nothing. The point after attempt, no good. Monte Alto then tries to answer back on fourth and goal, but Pirates defense holds him back, stops him there. Then on offense. Pirates quarterback Ty Leonard making his way in for the score. PAT is good. That makes it 13 to nothing at this point. And then late in the second quarter, Zach Bolick flipping his way into the end zone. Take a look at that. Nice job there. It was all Pirates in this one, folks. The final from London, 41 to 7. So keep it right here. We'll be back with more Friday Night Fever after the break.
Mic check, Sean. Sean, Sean, Sean. Mic check. Nikhil, you killed it! Uh -oh. Hey, welcome back. Well, it was a big game for the Sinton Pirates over in Sinton America now because they have not won a single game all season. Now, Bruni Badgers, they traveled two hours to Sinton because they also haven't won a single game this season. So how did it play out? We're about to show you right now. Now, Michael Troutman, the new head coach for the Pirates, sitting at 0-4 this year, obviously hoping to get that first win. Now, Badgers receive the ball first, but on their third down, their quarterback, as you can see here, trying to scramble to find somebody who he thinks was open, but nope, Pirates capitalized with an interception by Rogelio Rivas. And that's exactly how it would go down, really, for the Sinton Pirates all night. Sinton ball here, second down, and the Galvan brothers show how it's done. And that's Rylan Galvan all the way down to the end zone. Now, he also is a top-ranked baseball player in Texas for the class of 2020. Here, though, Badgers still not getting past the 50. Sinton again, and that's to Robert Hughes from Rene Galvan. And that's another TD for the Pirates. Sinton just putting on a clinic for the Badgers. And who is this? Again, it's Chris Burke as he takes it in for another Pirates TD. So the Pirates, well, they won't shut him out. Pirates end up winning 52 to 6. They will end up playing uh, Pirates. Well, they'll end up playing Rockport Fulton next week. And Bruni will. They'll have a sad ride home. I'll go and toss it back to you, Alan and Paul, at the field. Thank you. You are certainly their good luck charm tonight. Well, tonight here at Cabotas Field, uh, Veterans Memorial wins 29 0 over Ray. And You've got some analysis. Tell us about it. I have never seen anything like this. Both teams down to the third quarterback before halftime. Yes. I mean, it was a, just a nightmare scenario. Both teams had to start their backup quarterbacks because of injuries to the starters. Then it got worse from there. Ray's Ryan, Ryan Villalone was under immediate pressure. I mean, he took some punishment, as did Vets backup Joseph Gonzalez. The Eagles resorted to having running back Kobe Piper take some direct snaps out of the Wildcat. And that was about all the offense they could muster. Then a bad situation got worse. Vets lost quarterback Gonzalez to this gruesome shoulder injury when he was hit by Ray's Hayes Hopkins. He was also called for intentional grounding. And a minute later, Ray's Villalone had to exit with an ankle injury. He wanted to stay in the game, but could not return. The medical staff held him out. Ray then goes to quarterback number three in the person of running back, Ben De La Cerda, but he gets sacked as well. Nobody said this was going to be easy, but Jacob Hernandez, the sophomore third team quarterback for vets, no helmet decal yet, comes in, <laughs> throws a touchdown, runs for two, makes another beautiful pass to set up a touchdown, and the Eagles win 29 yeah. Such a great game. All right, we have more for you. We'll be right back after this quick timeout.
Friday Night Fever is brought to you. All right, let's run through these. GP defeats Floorville 17 to 14. Mathis defeats Santa Gertrudis Academy 46 to 6. Benketti falls to Taft 47 to 8. Ingleside falls to Zapata 28 to 20. St. John Paul, they're still undefeated, defeats Church John Paul 42 to 7. Kennedy defeats Woodsboro 61 to 8. Lifer defeats Falfurias 20 to 14. And rounding it out, Raymondville defeats Orange Grove 49 to 6. Now that is a good weekend of football. Alan Paul, tie this thing in a bow, please. All right, Jeff, thank you very much. Again, here, Veterans wins 29-0 over Ray. Despite playing their number three quarterback, they appear to be in pretty good shape. Vets versus Moody next week. We saw Moody last night. All right, should be a whole lot of fun. We'll see you next week for week seven of the Friday Night Fever. Have a great weekend, everybody. Friday Night Fever is a presentation of Chris Communications, brought to you by CCRV, Thomas Van Clinic, Mattress Firm, and Good and Crisp Chicken. Oh, oh, Jesus is good, and Jesus is great. Sir, sir, and that's why I don't master... John, that's how you know you're an expert. That's pretty good. Song. All right. Give me one second. <laughs> you ready? Yeah. Three, two, and one. Good morning of oh. Three, two, and one. 
Good morning, everybody. Happy Saturday. What a week six of high school football it was in the Coastal Bend. And the big number I'm going to tell you right now is 59. That's the amount of points the Miller offense is average in a game. Could they top it? Well, they're facing Carroll. Carroll looking for their first win of the Juan Rodriguez era and their first win of the season. And when you have a quarterback like Andrew Boddy, the offense just flows. Cassius Clay in the corner, touchdown. What a throw into double coverage. So poisoned. Now he's going to find Ralph Rodriguez on the slant route over the middle, and he does the rest with his speedy feet. Touchdown, Miller. They're up 14 0 early. But Carroll, they say not so fast. Here comes Andre Sanders on the screen. 80 yards. Count it. Big box. House. Carroll makes it 14 to 7. Yes, sir. Put your arms up. What a play. But Miller, they answer right back. And Andrew Body, if he does it through the air, he also does it on the ground. Watch this. Great move. Get off me. Trucks him over. Fights his way into the end zone. It was 48 to 7 after one quarter. Miller goes on to win. 72 to 7 is your final. You can get the rest of the scores and all the highlights from last night's Friday Night Fever on our website, ChrisTV.com. Don't forget, Texas on the road at West Virginia today, 2.30 kickoff. We'll have the highlights tonight. That's all your sports this Saturday morning. Have a great day, everyone.